Blender is incredible, there's no denying that. However, it's very feature rich and because of this, sometimes some of the tips and useful tricks can go untalked about. So what I did, since I've seen a lot of tips in my day, is put the top 10 for beginners that I wish I knew when I was starting out and put them in a video for you. All I ask in return is that if you see one that you didn't know before, hit the like button so that other people can see it too. Our first tip today is about rendering. I remember I started out on a cheap laptop that doesn't even work anymore, and so rendering animations was especially hard for me. So what I'm gonna be talking about is a free render farm called Sheepit. You may know what a render farm is. Essentially, if you have a lower computing power or maybe you don't have as much time, you usually would pay a service to have them render frames for you and it's usually much faster and there's a lot of good benefits associated with it. However, they're usually pretty expensive. Sheepit, on the other hand, is a Blender-specific render farm that is entirely free. All they ask for you to be able to use their service is for you to render 10 frames of someone else's. You download a client that utilizes your computing power to render frames, and if you leave it running overnight, it should meet that quota. It's a really well-made system that makes sure that the people who contribute most can also get the most out of it. I use the service myself, and it's really well-made, and it's rewarding to know that you're helping other people as well. I'll bet this one will hit home with a lot of modelers. If you do something such as a bevel with Control b you may notice that a little menu pops up down in the bottom left, and when you click on it, you'll get a bunch of settings, such as, in this case, offset or segments, and profile. This is called a context menu. However, when you do something such as select another edge, it goes away, and that's unfortunate because now you have to press undo to just get it back, and that's annoying. But fortunately, if you press the F9 key, it will all come back and you can go from right where you left off. Something you should get into the practice of early on is naming your objects. I know, I hate it too, but I, I have found a way to make it a little bit easier. If you press the F2 key, a little pop-up will show on your screen, allowing you to just type in the name of your object and press enter, and it will rename it for you. And that's easier than having to go over and double click on it and name it. And it's especially easier once you have multiple objects because, you know, imagine if your outliner is so filled up that you have to scroll through and find it to rename it. Well, instead, you could just right click on it and then press F2 and rename it. And it's a lot easier. So do get in the habit of naming your objects, though. It's a great practice, and it will help you stay organized, especially once you get into more complex scenes. Something that I would recommend every beginner do is to get feedback on your work. It's going to help you a lot because it's going to help you realize where you need to improve. Now that could be anywhere from the Blender Facebook, the Blender Discord, the Blender subreddit. It could be my Discord. You could reach out to me directly, but at some point you may come across a problem with textures and someone asks to see your blend file so that they can help you. But if you send them your blend file as is, it's probably not gonna contain the textures and that's just something to be aware of. And in some cases, you'll want the textures to come with the blend file, especially if it's a texture related issue. And there's other things that you need this for as well, such as rendering out your blend files on a render farm. And so the way that you're going to include textures in your blend file is to go up to file external data, pack into dot blend. And that's gonna take all those textures, any other kind of external scripts or things like that, and pack it into the blend file. Now this is going to increase the size of the blend file by the size of those files, but in some cases it's just necessary and it's just a good thing to keep in mind. I remember when I first started out, there weren't very many tutorials that taught about a full node setup for PBR shading. Thankfully now we have the principal BSDF and all that, so it's a lot easier. And there's so many tutorials. Grant Abbott specifically has a lot of great videos on the subject. But I wanna to talk to you about an add-on called Lily Surface Scrapper, or Scraper. I think it should be called Scraper, so I'm gonna call it Scraper. But essentially what it does is, well, I'll just show you. So we've got this tab in the material settings for this object here, and we have four texture websites here. So I'm gonna to go to CC0 Textures, this is one of my favorite texture websites as of yet. And once you find one that you think is appropriate for your scene, go ahead and just click on it and copy that link. And then go back to Blender, click Import from Clipboard, choose your resolution. 
I'm gonna go with 4K here and click OK. And what it's going to do is search through that URL, pick up those textures for you. And here's the crazy part. I can't make this up. This add-on takes a URL and generates an entire node setup with all the textures applied for an entire material just based on the URL. Ugh, sorry about that, my chair's a little rickety. But uh, yeah, this is insane. And ever since I found it, it has saved me so, so, so much time. So definitely check it out. I'll link it in the description. One of the first shortcuts you hear about is Shift D to create essentially a copy or a duplicate of something. Now, what if I told you that you're doing it all wrong? In a lot of cases, at least. The truth is there are two different versions of Shift D. There's Shift D to create a copy, and then there's Alt D to essentially create an instance. And I'll show you what that means in a second. When I press Shift D, there is no link between all of these objects. So if I want to change all of them, if let's say these were all trees, I would have to go into each of them and do it. And that's, and that's annoying. No one should have to do that. However, if you press Alt D, it will be linked to the object you duplicated it from because it's using the same mesh data. So if I go in and edit this one, it will edit the other one as well. So that's what I suggest you do if you have objects that need to be duplicated but they're supposed to all look the same. Now this next one is a selection method. I'm sure you're aware of lots of them, but I'll go over a quick overview for you right now. So your select button is probably left mouse, but mine is right mouse since I am stuck in the old blender. And to select multiple things, you're gonna have to press shift. You're gonna have to hold shift and then use your select button again, probably left mouse, but mine again is right mouse. You also have a box select with B, you also have a circle select with C. But let me ask you a question. Have you ever used circle select to select a path? Because that's the wrong way to do it, don't do that. Basically, if you hold the control key and then you right click, it's going to select the shortest path between where you started and where you ended. So it's really a great way to select and I rarely, rarely hear people talk about it, but it's very useful. You probably know how to bevel, it's just control B. But, do you know how to bevel a vertex? Well, there's a couple ways. If you want to bevel all the vertices that I have select, that you have selected, just press V when you're beveling, and it will just bevel the vert and it will just bevel the vertices. But if you just want to bevel one vertex, select that vertex, control shift B, and there you go. You've got all the same options, such as the segments and the profile, and I didn't know how to do that for way too long, so don't make that mistake. Now for this next tip, I'm gonna teach you about normals, and I think the best way to do that is to turn the normals on first. And so to do that, you're gonna go into these viewport options. You're gonna go into these viewport overlays, head down to normals, and check this box right here. And it's going to display these blue lines, and these are what normals are. Essentially, you can describe it as the direction that faces are facing. They also have normals for vertices and edges, but that's for another video. So you all know how to extrude. You press the E key, and as you can see, it's extruding along that normal. However, did you know that there's more extrude options? If you press the Alt E key, you'll have two more options besides the normal extrude. One of them is to extrude the individual faces and that will extrude each face individually along its own normal axis. However, if you press Alt-E and press extrude faces along normals, it will extrude them all on their own normals, except it will also keep them connected. And this is a really nice way to solidify things. However, be careful because as you can see, if I go the opposite way, the normals disappear. Why is that? Because they go inside of the object instead. And that means that it thinks this is an inside out object Maybe it's a room or a spaceship or something like that, and this is the inside. However, this is not gonna render well, and if you try to bring it into a game engine, well, good luck with that. So the way to fix that is to go to Mesh, Normals, Recalculate Outside. Essentially, it just takes all those normals and flips so they're all facing outside. Another way to do it is to press Alt-N and either choose Flip if they're all flipped the wrong way, or just Recalculate Outside. And finally, this tip is about Blender, but life as well. Don't spend too much time talking about or watching the software. You need to get in and actually learn the software yourself. Get some experience with it and work on your own projects. Don't get stuck on Tutorial Island. I know the tutorials are great these days, and it's real easy to 
only make projects that you watch in tutorials. However, if you stay on Tutorial Island too long, you may find yourself stranded there, and that's no place to be. So spend at least as much time working on your own projects as you do in tutorials, and you should be fine. What I'm showing you right now is a project that I like to work on in my spare time, and that is recreating characters from 2D games and bringing them into 3D. To, uh, games is actually a great source of inspiration for me, so find that source of inspiration for you and find the reason that you wanted to learn 3D and make a lot of projects. And you may be thinking, Daniel, what? I already do this. And to that I say congratulations, but there are a surprising amount of people that only make things from tutorials. So to those people I would say, get out there and start making your own projects. It'll help you be more confident as an artist and it'll help you grow in your skills. So that's all from me. I wish you the best on your Blender journey. I wish you the best of days. Now is a great time to be doing all this because, well, we're all stuck indoors and there's just a abundance of learning resources out there these days. So with that, again, wish you the best of days and happy blending everybody. See you later.